everyone. How's it going? Uh, we are back at our Technique videos. And uh, this week we're doing something a little bit different. Uh, not so much about playing the bass, but we're talking today about amplifying the instrument uh, and getting a good sound in a recording studio environment as well. Um, so we're going to go through three different scenarios that uh, are common um, that you'll run into. First one is not ideal, but as an upright player, you're going to run into it. Uh, and I'm sure, you know, some of you may have a, a bass amp kicking around at home. So we're, we're looking at um, plugging into an electric bass amp. Most bass amplifiers are actually designed for electric bass. Um, this one right here is no exception. Uh, this is an Aguilar SB112 cabinet. That's, uh, sorry, SL112 cabinet, super light 112. And uh, on top of that is the Tone Hammer 500, another Aguilar product, uh, and that's the head of the amplifier. So some amplifiers come, you know, separately. There's cabinets, the box below, and heads, which are kind of like the control panel of the amp. Um, some amps are combo amps, which means that the, the head and the um, cabinet are in the same body. Um, that might be the more common one you might have run into. Um, but nonetheless, yeah, they're very commonly designed for electric bass. Um, but, and you know, if you're at a rehearsal studio, um, if there's a bass I'm kicking around at a gig that you're sharing with other bands, a lot of the time uh, it's going to be an electric bass amp. So um, there are acoustic bass amps. There's a company called Acoustic Image that makes really high-end acoustic amplifiers that are really nice and are designed for upright bass. Um, but more times than not, you're going to run into a standard electric bass amplifier uh, when you're at a gig. So it's a, it's, you know, it's not like the quote unquote end of the world. If you have an electric bass amp or anything, it just, you just have to know how to tweak the settings to make it applicable for upright. So right now the, um, all the settings are flat on the amplifier, which means they're at zero. Nothing's taken out, nothing's put in. Uh, it sounds like this. Definitely pretty good, you know? Um, but the first thing I notice is the bass is cranked. Um, this is because obviously when you're plugging in an electric bass, it's more of a controller, less of a, you know, it's not producing its own sound necessarily outside of an amplifier. So um, the amp is there to give it bass frequency. When you're plugging in an upright, you don't need as much bass frequency help. The instrument is already cranking out low end itself. So first thing um, we're going to talk about, we'll do like two different scenarios. First thing we'll do is we're going to just take some frequency out of the bass setting on the amp. Uh, and that doesn't mean like pull it all the way out. Um, I'll probably put it at like, if you if you think of like all the way down as like negative uh, 12, all the way up as positive 12, I'll probably put it at like five or six, negative five or six. Um, all right, so I just twisted it to there. Let's hear that again. Yeah, in my eyes, that's a much more controlled sound. Um, and it, now the next thing for me is it almost feels a little bit dull. Um, I'm not getting as much like kind of like wah, wah kind of sound, you know, which is like the sound vibrating, uh, the string vibrating against the fingerboard. Um, and on this amp, actually, I have a control um, for my mids, uh, mid-level frequencies. Um, this is kind of special. Not every amp has this, but um, there's a knob that allows you to select what frequency you want to adjust within the mid-level range. Um, mids, you know, start around um, 80. Um, and they go, I think, about to 1,000. Let me just check my box up here because it has the numbers. Yeah, I mean, the, the frequencies that we consider mids for bass is about, um, you know... Um, about 80 hertz, 100 hertz to 1,000 hertz. That's what we're working with in our instrument. So uh, it allows me to specify what frequency I want to, um, you know, get uh, heightened or lessened. So I might give myself a little bit of a boost. Um, and, you know, to get that buzz, something like 500 or 600 hertz is probably good. Um, 
a little bit hard to specify where that is. It's, it's kind of like on the G string, um, you know, somewhere you're getting that kind of sound and that's gonna, you know, obviously every note you're playing has those frequencies at some point in its spectrum. So let's do that. We're gonna go maybe like plus four for that. And then I can now turn up the level of that specific frequency because that's another mid now. Let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, it has that growl now that I was missing. And not every amp has this setting. A lot of amps just have a standard low knob, mid knob, high knob. Um, so the most important thing is that you just take some lows out uh, and then you can play around with the mid knob and see if maybe a little bit of extra juice on the mids is gonna help you brighten up the sound. Um, again, this is an electric bass amp that we're trying to kind of use for acoustic bass. Um, so that's one scenario. Um, if you're looking for kind of a more acoustic sound, just like you just want to try to get the amp to project the sound of the instrument. Um, the other one is, let's say you actually want a kind of bass heavy sound. Um, and, you know, maybe you're just looking for a way to pull out some of that like woof that you're getting. Um, again, using this kind of mid frequency knob, um, this is maybe more specific for people that have an amp that has that kind of mid frequency design. Um, but I'm put, putting the bass back to zero. Um, and then the mid level, I'm actually going to be pulling out, um, around 80 to hundred Hertz. That's kind of the, um, a string area getting up to the open D a lot of like the woof sound, um, is in there. So pulling that out is actually going to help um, get a clearer sound. Uh, you can still get a really nice low bottom heavy sound, but not quite as like overpowering. So let's hear that. All right, mid frequency down. There we go. Cool. Let's see what that sounds like. It still has that like bottom end punch um, but at the same time maybe not quite as overwhelming as that first demo I did uh, with everything flat um, I mean and you know even if you don't have a mid frequency knob on your amp um, you can you know absolutely try leaving the bass centered pull out some mids a little bit and see what that does you know what I mean um, just try to find your sweet spot if you're going for a fully acoustic sound try the first thing you know you pull just pull the bass frequency down a little bit, maybe a little bit of extra mids. If you're going for a bottom heavy sound, keep that bass at zero, pull out some mids. Um, it's, it's always good to pull out before you add. And this is just like a common thing that musicians talk about and engineers talk about. Like, don't just keep adding frequency. Um, it's almost like you're trying to create a sculpture, like to, to, to sculpt something, you need to chip away at it, you know? So definitely always make sure you have something that you're pulling out if you're gonna add something else in. Um, you want that balance or else like you're just going to be kind of, um, yeah, overdriving the sound. Um, you'll get a much, it'll be way easier to get a good sound if you're pulling out as well as adding in. Um, yeah, so that's kind of scenario number one, dealing with a electric bass amp um, and trying to make it work on upright. Next, we're going to move to um, the live sound setup that I typically use. I'm gonna put my bass down really quick so I can show you this sweet piece. It's called um, the Grace Felix. Um, this great company in Colorado called Grace Audio makes them. And uh, it's definitely a little complicated looking. It looks like that. So um, there's actually two different panels of controls because um, there's, there's two different ways to uh, plug in. You can plug in a microphone on one of the channels and a direct input on another channel going right into the bass with a pickup. So uh, it's a really good way to get a blended sound on upright. Um, so what I'm gonna do here, I'm actually, sorry, remember? So walking a little far away from the mic there. I hope you can hear me there. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug this box into my amplifier for now. On a live sound setup, I would typically be plugging it into 
a uh, PA, you know, um, whatever speaker system they have available, just going directly into that. Um, but for now, I'm going to use my amp kind of as if it were a PA that I'd be plugging into because I don't own a PA myself. Um, so I'm just going to um, get my bass amp back to the setting that I prefer, which is a little bit less bass, maybe give me a little bit of that wah sound uh, at around 600 hertz or so. Um, and then the really cool thing about this is it actually has a setting on the back where you can use a um, quarter inch cable and go right into an amp. So here's what I'll do. Plugging my amp cable into the amp. First I'll mute my amp so I don't get any sound. Let that fall. Amp cable goes into the amp. And I'll put that back up here for now. And then we're gonna do, here's my clip-on microphone. This is an Audio Technica 350. Um, really solid clip-on microphone. Um, they seem to have discontinued it, so I, I added one that's really similar uh, into the, you know, the chat below with all those links. Um, and then my DI on my bass is the uh, Realist Lifeline. David Gage, it's a great bass company here in New York, makes this great pickup. Um, then I'll show you when I pick up my bass. Um, so that's what I'm going into with this guy, the DI cable. Um, and let me just plug that in here. So now this is going into the other channel. A little bit of a you know, going back and forth on a bunch of different stuff here. Uh. All right, so let's see if I can pick my bass up. So my Realist Lifeline pickup goes into a little, like, spot in my bridge that's been carved out. And um, for those of you that have bridge wheels on your bass, you can actually just put that Realist Lifeline pickup under the bridge wheel, and it sits very comfortably. Um, I don't have bridge wheels in my base, so my setup guy had to do a little um, slit in my bridge where it fits in. So that's the lifeline, it goes into the bridge, and the, this clip-on mic, I just actually hook it right onto this little plastic piece on the Realist Lifeline. Let's see if I can pick it up and do it at the same time. So that just goes right there. And it's picking up sound directly in between the bridge feet, which is a really sweet spot for getting a good sound. Um, all right, let me, uh, I'm gonna unmute everything. Hopefully there's no feedback. Oh, you see what I mean? There's already feedback coming back, probably from the microphone. Let's see. Yeah, plenty of room there. Cool. So now I'm using my live sound setup into my amp. And what I do with this live sound setup, again, there's two different channels. Um, for the most part, I leave the DI channel flat. There's no um, frequencies pulled out or added in. Uh, and then the microphone channel, there's a similar setting on the Grace Felix as to the amp that I can control which mid frequencies I'm dealing with. So I pull out um, the frequencies around 80 hertz, um, that woofy sound, and I'm pulling that out um, Actually, excuse me, that's coming out of the DI channel. Pulling that out of the DI, the microphone's flat. Excuse me there. Because you think about the microphone frequencies, what's this clip-on microphone picking up? For the most part, it's getting that kind of like acoustic natural sound of the instrument. The DI is getting the real low end and just like the bass clear, but not very natural sound. So that's that frequency you'd want to, you'd want to be dealing with like a low end frequency or a low mid frequency from the DI. So I'm pulling it out of the DI, not the microphone. Microphone flat, and the DI I'm just pulling out around 80 hertz. Yeah, and the Grace Felix is actually awesome because it has a, um, you can kind of decide how much of each uh, channel you're getting in. 
Um, so let's see here. Right now it's down the middle, you know? Um, but if you were playing more with the bow or something, try giving it a little bit more of the, of the clip-on mic. You're going to get a more natural sound. Let's see if you can do this without feeding back. All right, now we're using a lot more microphone. First, maybe I'll play a pit so you can hear the difference. With a bow. Yeah, that long sustained kind of sound is much more bow friendly, you know, using the clip on microphone. So the cool thing about the Grace Felix is you can actually decide how much of each you want. Uh, and I do recommend getting a blended preamp so you can use a clip-on microphone along with the DI when you're playing a live show. You want that natural acoustic sound and it's gonna be hard to get with just a DI. So DI and a clip-on mic together, mwah, it's a perfect way to get a blended sound with an upright bass that feels natural. Um, yeah, so that's the Grace Felix DI live sound setup. Again, I would be plugging into a PA, not a bass amp, um, just to give you an idea, but it's what I have. So it's what we're doing. And we're muted. Okay. So last but not least, we are looking at in a recorded environment, what do I do in a recording studio, you know, and it's totally different than what I'm doing with live sound or what I would be doing, plugging into an electric bass amp. Um, it's actually very, very much using this microphone here um, that I have in front of me. Give me a second here. I'll drop everything. So this microphone is um, an AKG C214. Uh, it's a large diaphragm condenser microphone. You know, if you if you play bluegrass a lot, you might re you know realize or remember that this is. Um, the kind of microphone that people are singing into most of the time, right? You can gather around a microphone like this and get a really nice vocal blend with two or three people. Um, it's also a great microphone for recording pretty much any instrument. It's just very neutral and natural and picks up anything you want it to. Um, so this is an example of a microphone I might be using in a recording environment. Um, sometimes there's other types of microphones like a ribbon microphone. Um, I actually do not know much about ribbon mics, but you can do your own research if you want. Um, I just know engineers are like, yeah, this is fancy. You should, you should check this out. Um, so I'm more, you know, I, I know a little bit more about uh, large diaphragm condensers and my bands work with them a lot. Um, so I would use something like this. Um, there might be a little bit of noise here as I take off the windscreen. Try to do it gently. All right. So this, you know, a windscreen is really for talking um, it's less for instruments. So when you're recording an instrument, you don't really need a windscreen on. Um, so here's what I would do. And let's make sure you can actually see it once I get it down. So the mic's all the way down here now. And, um, I point it towards the treble F hole, you know, that's this side of the bass. Um, you're going to get a lot less boom if you're going towards that F hole instead of the bass F hole. So it's going towards the treble F hole. Some people go towards the bridge too, but I feel like that, that tends to be a little bit of a thinner sound. I like it when it goes directly towards one of the sound holes. So it's going towards the treble F hole. See what that sounds like. And actually I'm going to uh, tilt it down a little bit more here. All right, that's good. Standing about a foot back from it. Uh, that's typically where um, most engineers like to place it. And um, I'm, I'm, you know, kind of let them do their thing most of the time. So this is what I've done in the past, about a foot away. <clears throat> um, one other thing with a recording environment, bringing this mic into play. So this microphone um, is kind of taking place uh, of a pencil condenser microphone. Um, as you can see, it you know is thin, kind of like a pencil. There you go. Um, but it's it's not a condenser microphone. I don't own a pencil condenser. Um, 
you know, it's a different type of condenser than a large diagram like you have down here. Um, but it is um, an SM58 microphone, which is a Shure microphone that everyone uses. Um, it's typically for vocals, but um, I heard from someone that you can actually, if you just take the top off of it, you know, there's like a, the windscreen on top of that essentially. You just take that off and, and it kind of looks and pretty much responds like an SM57 would, which is the instrumental type of microphone. You know, you got your instrument mic is SM57 and the vocal mic's an SM58. They're actually not that different, apparently. Um, so this is kind of in lieu of a pencil condenser microphone. I'm using this dynamic mic. Um, and it's gonna go on the fingerboard. Uh, and this is gonna, you know, you've noticed pretty much every time we're doing a sound thing, I'm talking about how to get a natural sound with upright. Because it's, it's kind of a hard thing to mix um, and record without it losing some of its element. You know, it has a great low end and is very rich, but it also has a lot of textures and little um, sounds coming out of the fingerboard and finger noises. So this microphone is kind of there for that. So let's see what I would do. Yeah, something like this is probably what I would end up doing. Let's see, maybe I'll go on this side actually. Yeah, there we go. So it's, it's hit, you know, getting to the fingerboard and it's gonna get some of my finger noise. So let's see what that sounds like. Um, you know, that A being with the original, just the condenser mic. Yeah, and again, this, you know, the microphone that picks up kind of the textures and the, not just like the rich kind of sound of the instrument is always really helpful for the bow. Uh, Cause it, it's picking up a lot of the natural sound of the bow. Yeah, so to recap everyone, um, electric bass amp. You want to pull some of those bass frequencies out, maybe boost your mids a little bit to compensate. Or keep the bass where it is, pull some mids out. You can play around with it and see which one you like more. They're going to produce a different sound. Uh, live sound, playing on a stage. Um, I use the Grace Felix DI. There's two different channels, so I can blend my DI with a clip-on microphone. Um, DI is getting that main rich sound of the bass. The clip-on mic is getting all the details. And then a recording environment, large diaphragm condenser um, or a ribbon microphone um, to capture the kind of rich sound of the instrument going to the treble F hole and adding a pencil condenser microphone. And obviously this is subbing for one of those to the fingerboard to pick up some extra textures. So that pretty much covers most of my sound um, run-ins that I have. And I hope this video was helpful. And all my gear that I mentioned is listed below the video. Um, all the links and you can check it all out and see if you want to pick something up. Uh, I will say that I am a sponsored artist of Aguilar and highly recommend their products. Um, they're really, really one of the best base end companies around. So um, check out, you know, everything they have to offer. And um, yeah, thanks so much. And, you know, feel free to ask any questions, um, even down the road. Like if you're in a rehearsal environment or a gig, you know, when things pick up again and, and you're like, oh man, uh, what am I doing here? Maybe Nate can help out. Shoot me a message. You know, it's never too late. And uh, I'm happy to help. So uh, enjoy playing around, playing around with all this stuff and picking up some new gear uh, if you want. And uh, I'll see you next week, everyone.